Is this tiny amp any good? It's cheaper than most, yet still has a screen, a remote, EQ options, two 3116 amp chips, and Bluetooth. Are they even making any money on these? SMSL excels at a couple of things for certain. Getting screens on products and providing remotes. They never seem to struggle with this, yet it's something that a lot of their competitors still haven't picked up on. The screen gives the A50 a leg up on the competition as far as a polished finish. It just looks a little more put together. This is the smallest class D amp I have on hand right now, and I can't actually think of anything smaller that I've had in for review, actually. Uh, the other big difference between this one and the others that I have here is this one has tone controls, just like a lot of the ones I have, but these are all handled within the digital domain. So the positive there is it's really easy to find neutral rather than aligning the dials, but you lose out on some of the flexibility. It's either plus one, two, three, et cetera. So the jumps may seem like they're a little bit more dramatic than you're used to. This information also applies to the volume control, but I'll go into that a little bit further in. As I said, this has a screen and a remote. In the comments below, let me know which of these two features you find more desirable in an amp like this. For me, it's likely the remote, but I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. Something that we regularly see on SMSL products, but rarely see on some of the other small desktop sized amps from the competitors are the selectable EQ presets. I was really glad to see these as the sound can come across a little bit too thin with the EQ bypassed. I found that bumping it over to the base EQ added a little bit of warmness that really benefited the sound. It took the edge off that I was experiencing, I would say. There's actually seven different modes that you can select from. Direct, which I assume is no EQ, and then tone, bass, super bass, rock, soft, and clear. They offer a chart on the site, but it's a little bit difficult to read. It's really small and all of the EQs are shown at once on it, and I just had trouble getting a whole lot from that. So what I would suggest to you is tune into your favorite genre or a song that you know really well, and move through the different EQs to see which one benefits your speaker pairing the most. Once you have that dialed in, move over to the tone controls if you need just a little bit more tweaking. I would suggest here that you only go plus minus one in either direction for the tone controls. The digital tone controls make some pretty big jumps. So plus minus one is gonna be fine. Anything beyond that is likely gonna be a bit too much and might cause some additional issues. Like I mentioned earlier, we get a remote with this one. Not many of these come with remotes, so seeing that this one does at nearly the cheapest price point makes me think, well, that I kind of want all the competitors to start offering it as well. It's a decent little remote, definitely not the cheapest one that I've ran into. It's a decent size and has a good feel, and it offers just what I wanted plus an extra. Using the remote makes it a little easier to navigate the menu structure for these, like EQ and tone controls, plus you can easily select between inputs and of course adjust the volume without getting up. The feature I didn't expect to see was that I can actually turn the display off with the remote. That's a nice little quirk, so you can get this set up how you want it, then hide it away and just have it get out of the way of the music. Included is a 24 volt, 6.75 amp power supply. It's gonna provide enough power to get bookshelf speakers up to a reasonably loud volume in a small to medium sized room. SMSL posts this as 100 by two, but at least they were clear that this was at two ohms, and I'm not certain at what distortion level. They also give the much more useful numbers of 80 watts by two at four ohms, and 40 watts by two at eight. If I'm being honest, this sounds about right. The 40 watts win in comparison to several other chipsets that I've tested. Is 40 watts gonna be enough for you? Well, that depends on how sensitive your speakers are. I would suggest aiming for models with 86 dB and above, for best results. Really, this should drive anything in that range to volumes either reaching the threshold of too loud or going to distortion. So yeah, while it's not a little monster like some of the TPA3255 chipsets putting out over 100 watts per channel with a larger power supply, it still does its job just fine. And realistically, the 3255 combined with a 48 volt power supply, uh, these are priced at around double what this is. So it's really not up for comparison. So how does this one actually sound? Well, for around $65, you're not gonna get perfection. But at the same time, to hit on some of the key points, I didn't experience any hiss coming from my speakers or a thump during power up or down. Those are not sound quality assessments, but they are livability items that many look for. The actual sound quality, as I mentioned earlier, is a bit on the thin side when you have the EQ bypassed. The lows miss out a bit, not quite as engaged, and the highs have a little bit more of a metallic sound than I prefer. This can easily be controlled in a couple of ways though. For one, you can pair this with a warmer sounding speaker. If you wanna stay in the budget family, something like an ELAC, the BS41, 
It's a very warm flavored speaker that favors bass, uh, but, but by no means makes the highs shine. Pairing these two together, gives you a nice pairing that balances the pros and cons between the equipment. The other method, like I mentioned earlier, is to just connect what you have and fine tune the sound with the EQ, as well as the tone controls. Just get your music going and sit back in your listening position and adjust the settings with your remote. In my experience, play around with the bass EQ, as well as the rock. Those gave me the best experience and actually added a lot to the sound. Taking this a step further, I would suggest keeping things budget and pairing it with a Wii Mini or Pro and unlocking their powerful EQ. There's no reason you can't get the clean power coming from these 3116 amp chips flavored to your liking. And this isn't a knock on just SMSL products. A lot of these budget class D amps benefit from a little bit of fine tuning. Just remember that a little bit can go a long ways. This amp offers Bluetooth as well, and it did test fine, but in my experience, it's almost always worth upgrading to a simple streamer like what Weem offers. You get so many more capabilities added to the product for really a budget price. And at this point, I wouldn't doubt that a lot of you already have an extra streamer available anyways. If you simply want this in the garage or shop and quality isn't your primary focus, the Bluetooth is gonna work fine. It'll offer an additional level of accessibility for the quick connection. Speaker pairings for this one, I mentioned the ELAC BS41 earlier for its warm characteristics. It's a lower sensitivity, but this amp still got it done. I even paired it with a floor standing speaker, the KLH Candles, just to see how it would do with a larger but much more sensitive speaker. These coming in at a reported 96 dB sensitivity and it came through just fine. It wouldn't be my first choice to pair an amp this size with them, but just another example of what can be done as long as you mind your expectations. Basically, as long as these are not paired with anything too wild, these can drive a system plenty loud and it's doubtful that your speakers will cause any limitation. I would suggest this one is likely the second system, a location that isn't gonna need really loud levels of volume. It gets plenty loud, but it puts out the best quality in moderate levels of volume rather than blasting the house down volume. It doesn't have a sub out capability either, uh, unless you have speaker level inputs, so just keep that in mind as well. This little amp will do fantastic for any place you just need some background or ambient music playing, or even as a really simple soundbar replacement. Just remember, it's around $65, offers some unique features and accessories others don't, and can offer a pleasing listen in the right space. I would offer other suggestions for the next model, such as a sub out, more power, things along those lines, but that's not really where this product lives. This is the base and SMSL has an entire lineup of amps that scale into these options that I look forward to checking out as well. As always, if you made it this far, I truly appreciate it. You supporting the channel like this is what enables me to get more products in for review. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I have a lot more great content on the way, so stay tuned. Take care, see ya.